Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine. Uh, today we're continuing our chapter 10 notes. Um, we're still in section 10.4, I believe, and today we're going to talk about phase diagrams. So what is a phase diagram? It's a diagram that represents the phases of a substance as a function of temperature and pressure. And typically, temperature is on the x-axis and pressure is on the y-axis. So the phase diagram gives you some very valuable information. It tells you a critical temperature, a critical pressure, and the so-called critical point, all of which I will define in a moment or two. So let's look at the phase diagram for water. So you'll see, as I suggested, that uh, pressure is always on the y-axis. Temperature is always on the x-axis. Temperature may be in degrees C or Kelvin. Pressure may be in atmospheres, millimeters of mercury or kilopascals, because those are our three units that we'll be using for pressure. You'll notice that these phase diagrams always have this kind of crazy Y shape. There's always solid closest to the Y-axis, liquid in the middle, and gas along the x-axis. And you'll see that there's a line between the solid and liquid phases. So that would mean all along this line, depending on what the pressure is, you could read the temperature at which either melting, if it's absorbing energy, or freezing, if it's releasing energy, would take place along the line between liquid and gas. Again, depending on what pressure, you could read the temperature at which either vaporization, liquid to gas, would take place, or condensation, gas to liquid, would take place. And along this line, where's my pointer? Here it is, down here at the bottom, uh, between solid and gas. If it's absorbing energy, it would be subliming. And going from solid to gas, if it's releasing energy, it would be going from gas to liquid. And again, that would be deposition. Other things that are important to note is that there's always a spot or a point at which all three phases can coexist. So that would be the triple point, and you could read the pressure and the temperature at which that could occur. Um, another thing that we often see um, on these uh, types of phase diagrams is uh, being able to read the so-called normal melting, freezing, uh, boiling or condensation point. And so normal refers to at standard pressure. So you would look for standard pressure and then you would find that phase transition. And also we talk about a critical point, a pressure and temperature beyond which the substance may only exist as a gas. This is a uh, phase diagram for carbon dioxide and you'll see that it's a little different shape than that for water but again you'll see this y shape you'll see solid closest to the y-axis uh, gas closest to the x-axis and liquid in between and you'll see there's a triple point where all three can coexist all three phases and you'll see a critical point beyond which it can only exist as a gas so the critical temperature is defined as the highest temperature at which the solid and liquid phase can exist. So above that critical temperature, the substance would only be found as a gas. The critical pressure is the pressure that's required to liquefy a gas at its critical temperature. So the pressure that's needed to turn a gas into a liquid, when would that be useful? If you were in the business of selling bottles of gas, um, if you worked for air liquid or air pressure or one of those companies, the way they get the gases into those bottles is by putting them under a great deal of pressure. That's why the propane tank um, for your gas grill is very heavy because the walls of the container have to be able to withstand the pressure that's needed to liquefy a gas. <clears throat> And then we have the critical point, and that is the temperature and pressure that correspond to that critical point beyond which uh, the substance can only exist as a gas. 
So again, it cannot exist as a solid or liquid above that temperature and pressure. The critical point for water, which you are not responsible for, is 374 degrees C and 218 atmospheres. By way of comparison, um, standard atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere, so that critical pressure is pretty significant. And then how we read a phase diagram uh, along that line between solid and liquid would be where melting and freezing takes place. Uh, where boiling and condensation would take place would be the line that is between the liquid and gas phase, and the line between solid and gas are where sublimation and deposition could take place. Finally, the normal boiling point, as I referred to previously, refers to the temperature um, that corresponds to the change from liquid to gas at standard pressure. And the normal freezing point would be the uh, temperature that corresponds to where liquid goes to solid at standard pressure. And again, standard pressure, remember from STP a long time ago, standard pressure is defined as one atmosphere, one ATM, or 760 millimeters of mercury, or 101.325 kilopascals. So again, the normal condensation point refers to that temperature a substance condense condenses under standard pressure conditions, and the normal melting point refers to the temperature where a substance goes from solid to liquid at standard pressure. So I'm not going to talk about vapor pressure yet. That will be for another day. Um, but for now, this is Miss Augustine signing off.